Hello people and welcome back to our channel. We are back again with more information from the world of SpaceX. If you are new here, we welcome you to our channel. Don't forget to check our other videos on SpaceX updates. Let us talk today about SpaceX smart solutions to save millions of dollars and what possible initiatives does SpaceX take to spend investments wisely. Let's take a quick sneak peek at what's happening. Consider traveling 400 miles from Los Angeles to San Francisco in under 30 minutes and for free. This is exactly what Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla Motors and SpaceX, intends for a new transportation system. One of the best initiatives taken by SpaceX was to build reusable starships. These starships saved a good amount of revenue. These reusable starships are intended to revolutionize space access and, more crucially, to accomplish Musk's long-held aim of populating Mars, transforming mankind into a multi-planet species. Aside from being totally reusable, the BFR, known as the Starship, was meant to carry over 100 metric tons of payload goods or astronauts into low Earth orbit and, with on-orbit refueling, deliver that payload to the Moon, Mars or even further. Its reusability promised substantially lower launch costs and depending on the number of Starships built, Full reusability opened up the option of frequent orbital accessibility for roughly 2 million US dollars per launch. Now, SpaceX has successfully flown and landed a test vehicle known as the Starship SN15. This follows a series of testing that resulted in catastrophic explosions and spectacular accidents. The successful SN15 test is a significant achievement for SpaceX and it paves the way for future testing in the coming months. SpaceX's approach to Starship development is similar to how it developed its Falcon 9 partially reusable launch rocket. The process entails developing capability through operational testing which resulted in multiple Falcon 9 rocket failures before they were refined. They are now flying on a regular basis. The following phases for Starship will be higher altitude tests, followed by orbital flights using the super heavy booster stage as early as July, with fully operational services by 2023. Starship opens up the possibility of frequent, low cost, high volume space access. The vehicle's sheer size allows it to deploy very massive payloads, such as huge satellites or space station modules. Alternatively, a large number of smaller satellites can be launched at the same time. In terms of human spaceflight, Starship will play an important role in NASA's Project Artemis, with SpaceX being awarded a contract to provide the landing system that will transport astronauts from the gateway to the moon. Though a protest filed by competitors has resulted in the contract being paused pending arbitration, Musk also sees Starship as a critical capacity for bringing people to Mars in the next decades. Starship's possible national security and military applications must also be considered. SpaceX has marketed Starship as a way of quick point-to-point -point travel around the globe, capable of transporting troops or supplies to a remote operational deployment in under 30 minutes. The payload capacity of a Starship would allow it to deliver the equivalent of a C-17 cargo plane's load anywhere on the Earth within an hour. There are significant dangers in this concept, namely the difficulty in separating arriving Starships carrying troops or cargo from ballistic missiles. In a crisis, there is a high risk of miscalculation and escalation. A better alternative may be to use Starship to rapidly deploy massive military payloads into orbit, augmenting or reconstituting satellites damaged by opponent counter space capabilities. There is also a growing debate within the US Space Force about the Moon and cislunar space as a military competition domain, particularly in light of Chinese and Russian space activity. The justification for reusability for Australian launch providers must be assessed against the possible low cost of rocket gear production, including engines and payload mass requirements. Smaller satellite payloads, such as those that Australia is likely to seek in the next few years, are unlikely to justify the additional cost for local space launch providers of constructing a reusable rocket. It makes more sense to emphasize low cost, quick production and expendable launch vehicles to meet predicted demand 
from either domestic or international customers. As Australian businesses create larger rocket systems, reusability must be considered, especially for heavier payloads. This could create new chances for the Australian Defence Force to exploit its sovereign launch capabilities. In 10 years, the ADF Space Command may be able to manage sovereign controlled satellites and rely on sovereign launch capacity provided by Australian commercial launch providers. Waiting months for a launch would be impossible since forces acting in the air, sea and land domains would require space support immediately. Relying on a US launch provider like SpaceX would be problematic because they would be entirely tasked with supporting US operational requirements in a crisis. From the recent updates, SpaceX has saved NASA $500 million from just one rocket. Surprising, isn't it? The rocket billionaire debate, as fascinating as it is, might divert attention away from the facts. Here's an example. NASA saved at least $548 million, and maybe more, as a result of a single contract with Elon Musk's SpaceX. The US Space Agency picked the company's Falcon Heavy rocket a month ago to launch a space probe to Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, in 2024. The long-awaited Europa Clipper mission will fly near the celestial body and analyze the signs of water and extraterrestrial life. A link with Boeing's Space Launch System rocket, a massive space vehicle meant to deliver humans to the moon or Mars, was one of the project's skirted political problems. The rocket had just one flaw. It was quickly built from the remnants of a terminated NASA mission, and no firm blueprints for it existed. A decade ago, the people behind the project banded together to defend one another's efforts. In 2019, NASA's Inspector General investigated the options and was not optimistic about any of them, notably in terms of cost. Even if the SLS could send the probe to Jupiter sooner, the system would cost around 726 million US dollars. Other possible rockets, the United Launch Alliance's Delta IV and the Falcon Heavy, were expected to cost $450 million each. Having that launch capability at that expense just saves so much, especially for the science part of NASA, which just does not have the mega budgets that human spaceflight does. To see additional future NASA missions able to exploit the Heavy's lift capacity at that price range opens up a considerable amount of space access. The Falcon Heavy, which did not exist when the Europa mission was planned, has flown only three times. However, it will launch at least five more times, including for a NASA mission to the asteroid Psyche before the Europa mission, which is scheduled to begin in late 2024. Genius motives of SpaceX. So that was it for today, guys. We hope you liked this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, see ya.